You'll see it all with a free one-month trial of Racing UK. That he was one of the all-time great trainers is beyond contradiction. Sir Henry Cecil was a giant of the turf, an iconic figure, a legend whose words and deeds and remarkable exploits coloured a life that was devoted to his chosen profession and showcased not only his genuine love of the horse, but his uncanny understanding of the breed. Racing has seldom, if ever, been treated by a man who endeared himself to so many, earned the respect of even more, and who so rightly was described as a trainer touched by genius. It's proven in the record books. He won more than 400 pattern races, 10 times between 1976 and 1993 he was champion trainer. His classic hall remarkably reached a score in the mid-30s home and abroad with 25 of those classic successes, each and every one memorable in their own right achieved in Britain. At Royal Ascot he was king, his tally at flat racing's most prestigious, glitziest fixture of the entire year was a mind-boggling 75 winners, a record which looks sure to stand unthreatened for many years to come. Think of Sir Henry Cecil and is immediately associated with Warren Place, the famous racing yard in Newmarket. He took over from his then father-in-law, Sir Nell Merlis, at the end of 1976. If anyone had any doubt that Cecil could emulate a man like Merlis and all his achievements, the years that followed provided the defining answer. Cecil won the derby no fewer than four times. Slipanka was the first spectacular seven-length winner under a remarkable front-running ride from Steve Cawthon in 1985, followed two years later by reference point again ridden by Cawthon, who not only won the Derby, but also the King George and the St. Ledger. In 1993, it was Commander-in-Chief, a horse who never even ran as a two-year-old, who did the honours for Cecil under Mick Kinnan, before completing an English-Irish Derby double at the Curra, ridden by Pat Eddery. The last of the quartet was Oath, the Mount of Kieran Fallon, who made significant improvement from two to three and who duly added his name to Cecil's Derby Roll of Honour. Cecil's incredible knack with fillies, an ability which highlighted his quiet, instinctive understanding of horses, was uncanny. No fewer than six times from 1979 to 1999 did he win the 1,000 guineas, perhaps most notably with the wonderful Oh So Sharp who in 1985 completed the Phillies Triple Crown by also landing the Oaks and the St. Ledger to prove herself a truly exceptional talent. Take a trawl through Cecil's big race triumphs and you'll surely come across some of your very own all-time favourites. For more than two decades, Cecil reigned supreme as a trainer of champions, a champion himself but a series of consequences took its toll. There was a dramatic parting of the ways after a 14-year association with Sheikh Mohammed, who had owned a galaxy of the stable stars and who removed his entire 40-horse string in 1995. The size of his stable shrank and between 2001 and 2006, by which time his twin brother David had died of cancer Cecil was uh, sadly conspicuous by his absence from big race victories, which had become his norm. Almost unbelievably, in 2005, he saddled only 12 winners overall, and the following year, it was revealed that Henry himself was undergoing cancer treatment. A lesser man would have crumbled under the strain, would have walked away from the sport he loved, maybe bitter and disillusioned, but Cecil continued, in his usual dignified way, weathered the storms, survived the setbacks, and came bouncing right back once again. A turning point came at his beloved Epsom in 2007, when, seven years after his previous classic victory with Love Divine, he won the Oaks with Lightshift. It was emotional stuff, the reception he received, 
had to be witnessed to be believed and spoke volumes for Cecil's huge popularity and the undiluted respect everyone in racing had for him as a man and as a trainer. Warren Place began to climb once more, the admirable twice over and the hugely talented midday landed him a whole host of Group 1 triumphs, but it was one horse that put Cecil firmly back where he belonged in the spotlight. Frankel, fittingly owned and bred by Prince Khalid Abdullah, who admirably stood by Cecil through thick and thin, was the horse of a lifetime. When you think of flat racing in Britain, you think of quality, you think of classics, group races, top venues and top horses. And when you think of all these things, you also think of the man who was knighted for his services to the sport in the Queen's 2011 birthday honours list. The passing of Sir Henry Cecil may be the end of an era, but such was his extraordinary training talent his remarkable record and his genuine good grace and impeccable manners, that the impact he made throughout his career will be indelible in racing history. A century from now, racing folk will still talk about the great Sir Henry Cecil. For the moment, we can but reflect on the sadness of his passing, but also thank our lucky stars that we were able to witness at first hand all that made him great. Sir Henry Cecil, we salute you.